Dethatching your lawn can be an important step in taking an average looking yard and making it something spectacular. However, if you don't know what you're doing, you can actually end up doing more damage than good. Today we're going to talk about seven common mistakes the average DIYer makes that can end up costing them time, money, and making things worse in the long run. If you're new to lawn care, you've never dethatched before, it's simply the process of removing dead organic material from the top of your soil that can inhibit air, water, and nutrients from getting down into the roots of your grass. Removing that layer of dead organic material on the top of your soil allows your grass to breathe, take in nutrients, and thrive. The first common mistake the average DIYer makes when dethatching their lawn is just choosing the wrong time of year to dethatch. Regardless of your grass type, you want to make sure you dethatch your grass while it's actively growing. For cool season grass like I have, that's late spring or fall when the grass is really growing and thriving. If you have warm season grass, early summertime or any time throughout that summer growing season is ideal for you. The process of dethatching can be stressful on your lawn, so you want to make sure that you're not doing this during times of dormancy or when your grass is already stressed out by the elements. That can open you up to disease problems or weed issues that can end up making your lawn worse in the long run. The second common mistake the average DIYer makes when dethatching their lawn is using the wrong equipment. If you have a small yard and it's not gonna take you long to rake that entire thing, going through with a dethatching rake can pull that thatch layer out and you can get the job done relatively quickly. However, if you have a larger space, something up to about 10,000 square feet, you're gonna to wanna to go with a powered option. The one that I've used throughout the years, which has given me great results, is the Greenworks Dethatcher. It's a plug-in electric dethatching machine that has metal tines that spin quickly. It has three different settings that allow you to get aggressive if you really want to, or just graze the top of the surface to give it a light raking. Some cylinder mowers come with different cartridges that you can put into your machine, like the Swordman or like the Allet, like you see here. They have a dethatching cartridge that you can put right in, and it does a really great job of breaking through that thatch layer. For bigger lawns, you're probably going to want to go with a powered scarifying machine that has a flail blade and allows you to cover a greater surface in a shorter amount of time. If you have anything over about 10,000 square feet, that's going to be your best option. Powered scarifying machines are a little bit different. Instead of the metal tines, they have what are called flail blades that spin. They cut down a little bit deeper into the soil and the powered machine allows you to cover a greater surface in a shorter amount of time. However, they're quite a bit more expensive and if you don't want to spend a couple thousand dollars on a scarifying machine, you can rent one from a rental place like Home Depot or another hardware store that offers tool rental. The next common mistake when dethatching is doing the process while your grass is wet. Right now it's early in the morning, it's around 6.30 a.m. and the ground is still covered in dew or if you've just had rain or you just ran your irrigation system, that is not a good time to go through with your dethatching machine. Everything is gonna get gunked up in your machine. It's gonna be harder for all that thatch to get pulled up to the top of the surface. So doing this while your grass is dry is gonna be a better option. If you have an in-ground irrigation, turn off your sprinklers for a few days, wait for the weather to have no rain and wait for everything to dry out just a little bit. It's gonna allow that either dethatching rake the electric dethatcher or your powered scarifier to be able to lift up that thatch, pull it up to the surface, and it's gonna be a lot easier for you to collect that thatch after you've gone through your lawn. The fourth common mistake has to do with pre-emergent applications. Pre-emergent herbicides are put down either in a granular or liquid form, and what they do is they prevent weeds, specifically grassy weeds like crabgrass, from popping up and causing problems in your lawn. If you've put down a pre-emergent herbicide, you do not want to dethatch after you've done that because that dethatching process can interfere with the barrier in your soil that prevents those weeds from popping up. So if you've already put down your pre-emergent application, you may want to wait for a different time to dethatch your lawn. The next thing we want to try to avoid is dethatching while there's lots of weed pressure in your area. Dethatching opens up your soil and if there's lots of weed seeds flying throughout the air, you can have major issues with weeds if you're not careful. So choosing the ideal time to do that, specifically for cool season grass like I have, the best time would be during the fall because there's less of that weed pressure, there's less weed seeds flying around. If you want to do it in the spring, make sure that you're not doing this in an area where you've got lots of neighbors with weed seeds that are flying around everywhere. The next mistake we want to make sure to avoid is dethatching a lawn that doesn't have an established root system. 
The process of dethatching can be rough on your grass, so it's important that you have an established root system so that grass can bounce back after the dethatching and thrive the way that it should. If you're dethatching a lawn that's new, you're gonna cause some problems to that. So make sure you're not dethatching new sod or new grass seed that maybe you've put in that same season. That last mistake we want to avoid has to do with fertilization after dethatching your lawn. As I mentioned already, the process of dethatching is gonna cause some stress to your grass, but if you put down some fertilizer immediately after dethatching your lawn, it's gonna give it all the nutrients it needs to bounce back and start thriving the way that it should. If you neglect to do that, there's a good chance that weeds are gonna have more of a chance to take over your lawn, and it's just not gonna bounce back as quickly as it should. So once you're done with dethatching, you wanna make sure you remove all that dead material and put down a fertilizer, something that's gonna allow your grass to start thriving. If you take the right steps and dethatch at the appropriate time, you can end up with a beautiful lawn. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.